Welcome to Physician Academy. Today we'll be discussing pericardial eff effusion, as, and this is an introductory lecture. Pericardial effusion is an accumulation of fluid within the pericardial space. This is between the pericardium and the cardiac muscle. A transudative effusion is usually from congestive heart failure or nephrotic syndrome. Exudative effusions are from infection, and hemorrhagic is usually due to trauma. So common causes to keep track of as are infection, like viral infections, like Coxsackie virus or tuberculosis, neoplasm, another one would be con connective tissue diseases, such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, uremia, uh, like a kidney failure, or medications like drug-eluting stents can cause this, radiation treatment, uh, chest radiation treatment, myocardial infarction pericarditis. Uh, there's also post-pericardial, cardio, post-pericardiectomy syndrome from cardiac surgery. Now, in pericardial effusion, the rate of fluid accumulation is very important and is indicative of the seriousness of the symptoms. A slow accumulation allows for the pericardium to stretch and thus allow uh, compensation and people are usually less symptomatic so it allows a large volume of fluid to accumulate without any symptoms. The rapid accumulation of the fluid, uh, a small amount of fluid, can cause a big problem and be very symptomatic and lead to cardiac tamponade. Presenting symptoms. So either they present with nothing because they don't feel anything and they're asymptomatic because it was a slow accumulating uh, effusion or if it's a more rapidly accumulating one, they're going to have presenting signs like chest pain or discomfort, shortness of breath or dyspnea, cough, fever. So then the other thing you're going to look for is pericardial effusion is a secondary cause. So you need to look for a primary disease or other presenting symptoms that may be from the primary disease. So you also have classic exam features that people should be aware of. So this will show up on board exams, like a friction rub or a decreased heart sound in, in larger effusions. Large amounts of fluid around the heart can muffle the heart sound. Rapidly developing effusions can present with tamponade. That would be, and the symptoms would be dyspnea, hypotension, distant heart sounds, pulsus paradoxus, which is a large decrease in the systolic blood pressure and pulse wave amplitude during inspiration. The normal fall in pressure is less than 10 millimeters of mercury. When the drop is more than 10 millimeters of mercury, it is referred to as pulsus paradoxus. A big finding, which is pathognomonic. So if you see pathognomonic, meaning if you hear about this or see this on the board, or you should see this on, a, on an EKG, you should know instantly what this is, is called electrical alternans, which is rare. But when it is happening, it's this is the cause. So uh, it's an electrocardiographic phenomena of alternation of the QRS complex amplitude or axis between beats and a possible wandering baseline. It is seen in cardiac tamponade and severe pericardial effusions and is thought to be related to changes in the ventricular electrical axis due to fluid in the pericardium. As the heart essentially wobbles in the fluid filled pericardial sac. You also have chest x-ray findings, which can be an enlarged cardiac silhouette shaped like a flask of bottled water or a flask, also described as a boot-shaped silhouette. The echocardiogram, the image of an effusion in large effusions, the heart appears to be swinging, which might explain electrical alternans. Treatment depends on the cause and the symptoms. So obviously, if, if you know the cause of it, you need to correct the problem. If the patient is asymptomatic, the speed at which you correct the problem is less important. In tamponade, it becomes an emergency. So you need cardiocentesis, and that provides rapid relief from symptoms.